What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Subscribe if you are new. Today we are doing something really fun. It is the beginning of June and that is the perfect time to do a little hot girl summer reading list. I put together a list of books and I thought of like all the books that I feel like are the, the perfect summer reading books but also not so much like just love stories because I just filmed a romance book recommendation video. So I didn't want those two to overlap. When I think of summer reading books, I kind of think of like romance books, but these are different. These are more like fun, friendship, with also a little sprinkle of some love stories. But yeah, all of these books I have either given four or five stars because we did not survive a global pandemic to read bad books, am I right? So, let's get into this list. I mean, I couldn't make this list and not add a Sally Rooney book because I love Sally Rooney and I just think she's definitely one of my favorite authors. But I just had added normal people into my romance book recommendation video so I was like, you know what? A Conversation with Friends deserves a spot on this list because it's it's a complicated story. I feel like there's a lot of like mixed opinions on this book. Personally, I liked it, but I can see why people wouldn't because it's about these two ex-girlfriends who are also friends and they befriend this couple, Nick and, I'm forgetting the wife's name. They're a married couple. They're like a little, I think they're in their 30s. And then Bobby and Francis are in their 20s and they're like 21 or something like that. So they befriend them and they like get invited to all these like dinner parties and stuff. And then things get a little complicated because Francis, and Nick start a little fling on the side. I personally was not rooting for them, I'm gonna be honest. What I liked about this book is that I think that it makes you think about your own views on monogamy and just like what makes a good relationship. I think what Sally Rooney does that I really enjoy is that she captures like the complexity of people and just like how people are not good at communicating, you know, like what it means to be a good or a bad friend. You know, I'm not gonna lie, it made me mad at some points, but I also think that I enjoyed how much it made me question my own views on that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's definitely a very interesting read and I would recommend if you read it not to look at it so much like black and white. But yeah, overall, a great book. Moving on to Nine Perfect Strangers. I read this last summer and I mean, if you've been watching my videos, you already know how much I love Leanne Moriarty. Like I just think she is such a good writer and she knows how to make really good plot twists like oh my god they are just freaking crazy so this one also these two like conversation with friends and this one are being made into film adaptations so a conversation with friends i think is going to be released on amazon i want to say and then nine perfect strangers is coming to hulu i think at the end of the summer so that's why you should read this book this summer so then you're ready for when it comes out on Hulu, which I'm so excited to watch. Anyway, to give you guys a little summary of like what this book is about, essentially it's nine perfect strangers who go to a wellness retreat and all of them have very different reasons for being there. You kind of get to explore each different character and their backstories, which I mean, all of them are super juicy. There's this couple that just won the lottery and then there's this family dynamic. It's like a mom and a dad and then a daughter and she had a twin, but you don't know how the twin died until like later on in the book. And then there's this old lady who personally is like one of my faves. I just really enjoyed her character. Anyway, she goes down at the retreat and then you just, I mean, it is a whirlwind of stuff that goes down. I would definitely recommend. This book is a fun read. You're bound to relate to one of the characters. So I just feel like it's one of those books that is just so enjoyable. And in the end, it's just amazing. Moving on to City of Girls. I just finished this book and I feel like this is one of the perfect summer reading books because it is just one of those books where you are taken into a whole different world. Not a whole different world, but like a whole different time period. So this book is it's taking place in New York in the 1940s. And it's about this 19 year old girl who gets shipped off to live with her Aunt Peg. But 
this whole time that the book is going on, it starts off with this older woman who is Vivian, um, who's the main character. She is writing to this girl named Angela and Angela had written her and was like, hey, can you tell me about your relationship that you had with my dad? And so that is what this book is. So the whole book, she's like telling her from start to finish about her life because she's like, I think she's like supposed to be like in her 80s or something writing this story and just kind of like reflecting on her life. So the whole time you're kind of like guessing like which character is like the love for life, you know what I mean? Like who am I supposed to be paying attention to? But overall, I would say that it's a really great just like coming of age story and it's very heavily focused on her female friendships and kind of like finding herself along the way of meeting this man. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And it did kind of remind me of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So if you liked that book, then you should give this book a go because it's it has that whole older women, you know, telling her story about her life, all like the glamorous and the non-glamorous parts of it. So definitely very enjoyable and a really good summer read. So, oh, my foot's asleep. My foot fell asleep. Oh my god. Okay, so moving on to, okay, this I'm a sucker for. It's The Last Summer. This one, I can't even lie, this one's a full on love story. I really enjoyed this story. It's about this first love. It's taken place, I think, around like World War II. And so, kind of around the same time period that City of Girls was taking place. But this story is taking place over the span of like, I want to say three decades. It's a long time, but it's focused on this girl who meets this boy one summer and then he gets shipped off to the war and then you kind of see them like meeting and then breaking up again. It's kind of like the will they won't they get together type of story, but also like things happen like in their personal lives. I really like this. I really like this love story. Like it's one of those romantic type of like cute, kind of like Bridgerton vibes a little bit, but, but like kind of not at all. I don't know why it reminded me of Bridgerton. Anyway, so yeah, if you want like a cute romancy story, then definitely read The Last Summer. Okay, taking a little bit of a turn, next book I'm going to be talking about is The Last Mrs. Parrish. Definitely look up trigger warnings for this book. So it's about this woman, Daphne, who you will see is our main character. She's very manipulative and she befriends this woman who is Mrs. Parrish kind of like takes over her life a little bit and wants to steal her husband. And yeah, yeah, I can't really say much after that because it is just crazy. Like it's one of those stories that it's like, what, did not see that coming. But yeah, if you like thrillers, then you will like this book because it is insane. Moving on to another crazy book, we have Verity. I mean, I loved this book. I read this book in one day, like one sitting, because I literally couldn't get enough. Okay, so it's about this author who hasn't written anything in a long time. Then she gets picked up to write the remaining three books in this series written by Verity. But the thing is, is that Verity is currently brain dead and her husband is the one kind of like making this all happen and they had just lost their two kids and she goes to the house to write it because Verity had like all these like storylines written out and you just have to wait and see what happens after that because I was just in awe I was like this is it's so fast paced that it's like you just want to get it done like you just want to finish it to know what happens at the end and you will not be disappointed the ending is insane next up we have writers and lovers this one is a more chillaxed book it's definitely a coming of age story even though the main character is in her 30s i would still qualify this book as a coming of age story just because she's dealing with the loss of her mom and on top of it she has a really shitty job and she's just trying to make it as an author 
And on top of that, she is now involved in this like love triangle with this man who is a, a very like critically acclaimed author. And But then there's this other boy who is like also kind of like going through the waves of life like the way she is. And you just see her story unfold and it's very, it's definitely emotional. I also think that the main character is very relatable and you just, you can't help but just root her on and be like, you want things to work out, you know? This book is amazing. It's also beautifully written. I feel like if you like the style of Sally Rooney's writing, then you will definitely like Writers and Lovers. So good. Last but not least, I had to add this one in because I mean, is it summer without a little bit of a hot and heavy book? No. So. Last but not least, we have The Deal. I've talked about this book before. It has a cringy ass cover, but the off-campus series is, I mean, it's just, it's so good. Like, I really did not think I was gonna like this at all, but I did. And if you enjoy college romancy books, then you will definitely like this story. It's like the classic hockey guy who's like very much a bro. And then this girl who she's like, no, you're not my type at all. But she ends up tutoring him and the rest unfolds. And I mean, I feel like if you're on Book Talk, you've definitely heard of the Off Campus series. And I would say it does not disappoint. It's cringy. I mean, I feel like you can tell by the covers, you know, that it's a little cringe. But overall, it's like one of those like really fun, just like juicy, books that you're just like, oh, I love this. Okay, so that is all for my Hot Girl Summer reading list. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video. I will see you guys in probably my next vlog. So I love you and I will see you later.